All right. So this, thank you everybody for listening in and for the panelists that are here. This is a virtual lightning decision jam, uh, kind of, what would you call it? It, it is a uh, presentation, so to speak, on a process that I use frequently for getting a lot of different people that may or may not know each other in the room or in a virtual room and having them concentrate on a specific topic where everyone gets gives their point of view and it eventually comes to a direction or a conclusion with action items. Today, we're gonna to be concentrating on the oil and gas industry uh, and the processes involved with that. Uh, some people on the panel are very versed in that space and others are not. So it's gonna be a nice little blend of kind of seeing where, the, where things go in terms of like exploring what, what works and what doesn't. If you're currently uh, just watching this, either from YouTube or from Zoom, if you've registered and you want to participate in this, if you changed your mind between the time you registered and the time that, that we're, we're kind of viewing this, then be sure to put in either the Q&A or in the chat that you'd like to come over to the panelist side and take part in the, the process that we're going to be doing. I will be sharing my screen on my end to kind of show what we're going to be, we're going, to be going through. Uh, I'll try to keep it so that I don't flash in between too many tabs, uh, but let me go ahead and start doing that so that everyone is seeing what I am seeing. And make sure I share the right tab because chances are you don't want to look at my email either. Okay, so I'm going to briefly explain what we're going to be doing uh, within in everyone and so uh, Scott and Alex, you see something says that says love virtual lightning decision jam exploring exploring yeah exploring oil and gas process correct yeah okay yes. so as a quick overview of everything we're we'll be we'll be discussing or at least elaborating on things that are working I should say we're not discussing we're going to be exploring it in the mural uh, things that are currently working in this space in this industry it's, uh, that in regards to process. And then we're going to be talking about things that are challenging or not working, things that are that seem to be kind of uh, working very well. And this can come from all sorts of different directions. It doesn't necessarily come from somebody who's in engineering. It could be somebody from like uh, who's just a consumer of oil and gas, uh, or maybe even understanding uh, what from their perspective what the industry is like in terms of how it's being portrayed. So it's going to have a mix of different things. We're going to see what kind of comes out on top in terms of uh, the the top. Uh, challenges that the group feels that they should concentrate on. Uh, once we do that, we're going to prioritize what we've discussed. We're going to use a little bit of affinity diagramming and then arrange by interest. Um, we'll reframe the top problems that we vote on as challenges, meaning we're going to explore them as in terms of how might we and kind of see where things go. From there, we'll prioritize those challenge statements and go straight to ideation, where we think of some particular uh, solutions for the to answer the question that we had posed, the challenge question we had posed in the original uh, section. And then finally, we're going to decide on what to execute. So we'll have figured out our top problem, our top speculative statement, the ideas that correspond to that, and where in the mix uh, our panelists decide that they want to kind of traverse, meaning like where they want to take things. Uh, is this something they're interested in, not that interesting, and kind of see where it falls in the interest impact matrix. So that's a quick overview of the entire process. Uh, again, if you are interested in joining us, we're going to be getting started right now. So be sure to, and the way to do it is in Zoom. All you have to do is go into chat or in the Q&A and say, raise your hand or say a statement saying, hey, I'd like to join in. And then I'll add you while we are currently uh, getting started with this first one. And I'm going to really quick, I'm going to check the participant side to see if there's anyone attending that I know signed up through uh, email and is looking to get in and may not have seen the panelist link, but I don't see anyone. So it's going to be Alex, Scott, and us. Alex and Scott, it's going to be me, us three. And then maybe Owens can join us later on. Um, I'll just stop sharing really fast and just double, just double check because I have been guilty of kind of not seeing details when they are apparent. So give me 30 seconds. I'm going to check the calendar and make sure that I am not missing anyone. Do you two have any questions for me? No. There is an, an anonymous koala in the mural. Yes. So maybe they're joining, but they may not be on the call, but we'll see. Okay. Um, just give me a minute. Nope. I think 
we got pretty much everyone. Yeah. And okay. the question, the question is exploring oil and gas process. It's Cor that's correct. the topic. Okay. Yep. No yep. question. No. Good. Sorry. Go for it. Um, hang on a second. Right. So I'm going to be taking part in this as well. All right. So we're going to give a few minutes to go over this first part here, which is um, starting with things that are working. Now, Scott, since you're probably more of the, the subject matter expertise person in, in the room between the three of us, uh, take what me and put Alex in here with, with a grain of salt. We will have our, our perspectives, but we're not necessarily going to just suddenly have an epiphany around the engineering side of, of uh <laughs> Of oil and gas, but we'll do our best to try to contribute while we wait for other people to kind of come in. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So I'll put a little timer up here, and and Miro, we'll give ourselves let's give ourselves a start of four minutes. If we run out of things to kind of put into the mural, then we can basically bring it back a bit. And uh, I think uh, both of you are familiar with mural in that you just double click on a card to put in your ideas and or the things that are working right now with oil and gas and process. And uh, after four minutes, we'll take a look at how far we've gone and we'll move on to things that aren't working. And if either of you happen to see the chat light up and I don't, make sure you just kind of speak up and I'll, I'll take a look at it. And I will mute my microphone so you don't have to hear me kind of tap on my yeah, keyboard. Yeah. That's a good idea for me as well.
Okay. I was about to say we have five seconds left, but my microphone is muted. So we're done right now. Um, so we were kind of uh, expanded on things that are currently working within the oil and gas industry and process. Now we're going to flip that a bit and get into things that are challenging or problematic. Um, so in contrast to what you just did uh, in the previous section, go ahead and double click on a few cards and start putting down in your mind what things are challenging and problematic about the oil and gas industry right now in terms of process. And again, we'll give about, let's give about five minutes for this one.
We have about five seconds left. So if you're working on a card, go ahead and finish up. Okay. So the next step in this is to take what we've just done and we're going to sort it out a bit. So we're, we've collectively, I think between four people, because I saw another person kind of putting in their cards, uh, we're going to take what we've done together and we're going to put it in a space where we're going to sort them by category and by type. So if you give me a minute, I will go ahead and select the remaining ones that have some content put in, bring it over here. Oops. And apparently Mural did not understand that I wanted to copy these, not the old one. Try this one more time. Go ahead and select everything and put into kind of a box. Okay. Now, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with affinity diagramming, it's fairly straightforward. What you what you have up here, and I'm going to call everyone to first. I'm going to call everyone to kind of look at what I'm looking at. Up at the very top, you have a bunch of gold cards here that all say category in them. And there's two over here on the right that say uncategorized cards and redundant cards. Those are more utility uh, kind of places that we'll put to the, the right hand side for now. What you're gonna do is look at the, the uh, three, two by three digital cards down here that people that we've all kind of filled out. And you're gonna start to look for things that are similar. So just for example, even though these aren't similar, let's say, okay, so this one seems like this one and this one seems like it's the same. Once you find two or three that are similar, you're gonna go up here to the category, double click on it and put in something that you feel would be representative of that, where it could be difficult change, it could be one. And then you put all the cards that correspond to that category and put them underneath here vertically. So you'll be doing that in the, the next five minutes or so. Uh, go ahead and start sorting out the cards in a fashion that makes sense to you. Uh, there is no right and wrong, but uh, if you get one category that seems to have about 15 to 20 cards underneath it, it's probably a good time to uh, break that up a bit and subdivide it into a couple of other categories. You aren't limited to these six categories here. You can create new ones to the right if you've run out of them. And like I said before, I'll go ahead and put redundant and uncategorized over to the right so that they're not in the way. We could just use, put those, any cards that fit into those categories later on. So have at it and uh, let me know if you have any questions. One of the tips I also like to tell people is that when you have something like this third column that seems to be going straight down, but it's a little off, you can always highlight all of those cards and Mural will have a sub, uh, a sub menu that pops up and you can just basically go like say align to the right and then all of them magically pop up behind it uh, or pop into place. You can also highlight all of them again and in this uh, icon that's third to the left here, you can organize them all into a column and it will automatically space them out in case there's any overlap.
resistant to change looks a little bit long. Maybe we can divide that or split that up somehow. <clears throat> yeah, potentially. I'm going to put make costs all capital letters to keep with convention here. Since those categories seem to be going costs, environment, resistant to change. So they amplify the problem, so to speak, through the categories. Okay, so this looks pretty good. The next step is to look at the cards themselves and color in the ones that seem to be very, very similar to the point where there could be an argument to remove one of them. So the way to do this is you just basically choose a couple of the gray cards here. I'm just doing two, for example. Go up into Mural. Mural will have a basically a sub uh, kind of band here that you can choose things. Go to the color one and go ahead and choose any of the default colors that are lighter. Is that like a green? So you just basically highlight two that are very similar. So when we go into voting, we don't necessarily spread our votes over two that are that are exactly the same. Where we can uh, kind of break things down between one or the other. If you don't find two that are three that are similar, that's totally fine. I've done these where there are no similarities. There is enough differences between them. So there's a couple that have been highlighted. Uh, two pink. One says companies are not set up to be user focused. Another one says the process of buying and selling is not consumer customer centric. They are similar. I think they just speak to different audiences. So I don't. It's not. I don't think there's a, a good argument to necessarily take one out of the other, but it's good to highlight them to know that they have that similarity. Okay, so let's see here. We have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, so 27 out of 3. Um, let's do 8 votes each between the three of us and see where that takes us. So I'm going to go ahead and start a voting session. We're going to be voting on the problem we want to take forward in terms of uh, kind of a speculating on something that that seems really interesting in terms of a challenge or a problem. And go ahead and do that. Now I'm making it so that any member of this mural can basically vote. And the way to vote is basically to click on a card to vote. You can shift click to remove your vote. No one will be able to see your vote or where your, your mouse arrow is going. Uh, you do not want to vote on the category. So don't put any votes on the gold cards. Stay, uh, put your votes on anything that is gray or has those multicolors where we saw some similarities. Um, when the votes look like they're not moving or everyone has put down their votes that is voting, we'll go to see what the results are after that. Oh, so we have, we do have four people here. I'll go ahead and put in my votes as well. Okay, that was the last person to vote. The sea turtle is not voting. They are happily watching all the votes happen and they are not interested in, in getting involved. So we'll go ahead and see where the votes ended up on the voting session on my side. And let's take a look. 
So we have two that got three votes between everyone that, that had voted. Uh, there's digitiz digitization of the whole supply chain and new ideas about process are extremely difficult to prove value. So we have those two. Um, let's go ahead and use the exercise down below to kind of figure out which of those has a bit of an edge on the other. So I'm gonna go take the two, three ones here. I'm gonna copy them, bring it down by arrange by interest over here. And let's align these so that they are aligned at the top. Okay. So uh, Scott and Alex, the way this works is I'm going to go and put like say new ideas about process are extremely difficult to prove value right in the middle of this x-axis. The x-axis is meant to showcase interest from the two of you on where this should land. So if this one in terms of oil and gas process being a problem is has a higher interest for you in terms of moving into speculation and ideation then you would probably move your mouse over here and kind of do the circle like this. If it has low interest, meaning that's it's okay or not really something I'm interested in, then you wanna put your mouse over here. And we're gonna do it for both of these to see if one of these has more of a, an appeal in terms of all three of us than the other, okay? So we'll start with new ideas about idea about process are extreme, extremely difficult to prove. Uh, tell me where your interest is between the two of those. It looks like we've got a third party, which is great. So now it looks like it's right around here. I'll say right here because it kind of balances out a little bit like this. Okay. Next one is digitization of the whole supply chain. Where in terms of interest do you think this lies? In, also in relation to new ideas about process, is it, ooh, is it more or less uh, interesting in terms of that? So it looks like there's two over here. Alex thinks it's more interesting. So we're going to put this right around here. So it looks like new ideas about process are extremely difficult to prove value. Let's go ahead and move with that going forward. I'm gonna I put that can I ask a question? Go for it. Maybe you should ask it before. But by process, just to be clear, by process, do you mean business processes, for example? Because that's what I've taken, because to me process is the, is the oil and gas going through the system itself. Mm -hmm. But that probably doesn't, that's probably not what your interpretation would be of it. So I've taken it as you're meaning business processes here, for example. Yeah, let, let's see how that kind of pairs out and how might we, because oh, yeah. we'll, we'll all have our internal definitions of what we're seeing in that card. And then it will kind of manifest itself in the how might we stage in terms of speculation. And then the how might we would actually color the direction of how we might take our thinking going into ideation. So um, the next part of this is reframing this as a challenge. What the way this works for how might we is that essentially you're going to be taking this statement, new ideas about process are extremely difficult to prove. And you're basically going to just be answering the question, how might we? It's a way of not jumping to conclusions and speculating on where something could go. So I'm going to provide a couple of examples to showcase what that's like. Uh, so to answer the or to to speculate on the top problem it says, how might we introduce ideas uh, High, introduce high value ideas that have been implemented by other companies so that you showcase what people have done already as a way of saying, okay, there's proven value in the market for it. Another could be um, how might we run small experiments to start the process of convincing others. So I'll leave those two in there as examples, but that's kind of where this goes. You can be very specific like I've done, or you can be very general in terms of your how might we. So it's like, how might we um, uh, how might we show existing process uh, being less efficient? Something where it's a little bit more ambiguous, but uh, take it for what it is. Go ahead and write out what you think would be this, the question to ask about the top problem we have here. Um, if you run out of cards, I'm going to go ahead and start duplicating a few down here. And we'll, we'll give each other about five minutes for this and see where it goes. Um, put that over here. A little, need a little shortcut in mural if you want to copy cards really fast. It's just to hold down the command key on the Apple or control key on the, on the, on the PC and just basically hit control and D. And that pretty much brings a card that, uh, that gets copied to the right and is spaced appropriately on the grid. 
I'll do one more room over here. So again, we'll take five minutes. I'll start the timer now. Um, if I see that we're kind of slowing down and can't really think of any questions to ask, then we'll, we'll bring it to a close. Also, I'll, I'll uh, cap this space in terms of, say, four rows. So if we fill out all the rows, then I think we're in a, in a good place. There we go. Hey, Kate, I just added you as a panelist. There's other people that are kind of viewing right now that should be panelists or being part of what we're doing here. Uh, do speak up and I'll bring you over to the panelist side so that you can get started with what we're doing over here. And uh, Kate, what I'll do is I'll provide the link to the mural that I'm currently sharing. Um, so you can join in and if you want to, um, if you want to just jump right in and, and kind of get into uh, speculating on that top problem, then you're more than welcome to do so. There you go. That should work for you. And that's in the Zoom chat. I put that out to all panelists. Kate, are you able to get in okay? Oh, wait a minute. I think you're muted. Let me unmute you. Okay, say it one more time. Oh, hi, Robert. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now just fine. Perfect. Yeah, it looks like you're in as a duck. <laughs> yeah, quack, quack. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll bring it back on, on mute so that you can concentrate and I'll, I'll give I'll add an extra minute just in case you want to add a few, uh, a few notes. Perfect. And for those that are watching, again, I'll reiterate this exercise is to not come to any sort of solution or end state. This is just to speculate on where we should start thinking about ideas. What direction should we take our thinking? Kind of focus on our, on our <clears throat> focus our perspectives on a particular direction to go in.
We have a few more cards left. We don't have to fill them all in, but we have about four or five left. We have about a minute left as well. Okay, if you are working on anything right now, go ahead and wrap it up. And when you get done typing, just click anywhere in the white space to deselect your card and it should save everything. And we'll do another round of lovely affinity diagramming. It's kind of sorting out what we just talked or what we just thought about. And Kate, I'll re, uh, oops, that was strange. Let's try this one more time. Right. So I will zoom in and gather everybody looking at what I'm looking at. Okay, so very similar to what we just did. Uh, Scott and Alex are familiar with this, but Kate, the way this works is we have a bunch of gold cards up here that are all listed as category. We have a couple of, uh, we have a couple of ones that are listed as uncharacterized, uncharacterized or redundant cards that I'm gonna put over here temporarily. Oops, maybe I should ungroup that and that'll make it easier to move. Okay. And we'll just duplicate these. Okay. What you're gonna do is look at all of the cob might we's that people have put in this space. You're gonna be looking for things that are similar in nature or basically something you could categorize. So just as an example, let's say I put this one here and I put another one over here these two are similar in some way, I'm going to go ahead in the category and put something about like legal so that everything that I put in the future in this stack under this thing is going to be corresponding to a legal category. And you do that for the rest of the gold categories in, in turn. If you need more categories, you can either go to the left or right and just copy them. But you can go ahead and take, you can, anyone, all of you can get started. Go ahead and take the how might we's that are here and go ahead and put them into categories that make sense for you. I'll give about five minutes for this. For those of you who are participating, or uh, sorry, for those of you who are watching as observers, You'll notice that throughout this process so far, there hasn't been any elaborate discussion on anything we've been doing. This has all been kind of show and tell through Mural and using the digital whiteboard to uh, kind of showcase our thinking both around the problem and then eventually the solution. Usually when people come offline, it's because there's a technical issue with working with Mural or there's a problem offline where they need to attend to something and they need to break away. But more often than not, this is the nature of a virtual lightning decision gem and that there really is a much discussion until the very end where we're sharing our points of view over the entire body of work that we just got done completing.
I will also add with this affinity diagramming exercise, there are no right or wrong answers. This is pretty much about perspective and not necessarily thinking that one way is one mode of thinking is right over another. This is just to kind of take everything that we've been thinking about in terms of a speculative challenge statement and seeing where things fall. Now, if you find there are cards that don't seem to fit any particular category that are single in nature, that's when you, when you would use uncharacterized cards and put them over there, uh, just to basically put them in a holding spot. Um, and if you do happen to find a place for them that makes sense, you can do so. Uh, but usually if there's only one and it can't find a pair to make a category, then it probably could needs to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about that. I was just uh, making sure that I heard a bunch of messages on either LinkedIn or YouTube, so I wanted to go over there and check it out. Okay, at this point, take a look at all of the different statements here. And like we had done in the previous exercise, highlight particular ones in color uh, that you think are very similar or could arguably be replaced, meaning that one could take the, 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 the place of both. So the way to do this is basically by selecting two cards that are in the same space or close to it and using Mural's sub-navigation menu here or sub-menu on whenever there's the selector menu and choosing a different color like an orange or potentially even a purple, but something that gives it a visual uh, differences from what the other ones in the space and just check over the cards to see if there are any similarities. Uh, if there isn't, then we can go straight to voting, but I'll give about 30 seconds just to see if anyone can see anything that are uh, any similar cards that we need to kind of point out before we vote. Okay. There's two up and showing the value. It says, how might we make it easier to demonstrate value? How might we demonstrate value conceptually in a convincing manner? Um, one is about easy. One is about convincing. They could arguably be con like uh, combined. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a toss up. <clears throat> I think for now we'll leave them. There's, they're, they're very, very similar though. They really are. There's like a, only a couple of words that are off, but um, I think that's the one that it, those, that's just the similarity we can, we can, I think we're good. So let's give them a count. We have, oh, let me go ahead and arrange this so that this is in a column. So we have five, 10, 15, oop, we got a new one. How might we introduce a value score for existing processes to compare with the new ones? How might we show the cost of current inefficiencies in the process and make it itemized? Yeah, they are similar. This one has a, a bigger difference score, I think, than the green one, but I think they, they belong. It's a good thing to point them out. I would still keep them as separate cards. Five, 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30. So now we have about five. I'm going to give everyone seven votes for this one. 
And again, we're going to be uh, selecting the, the challenge statement that seems to make sense for us that we want to move forward and you would want to produce ideas for. So we'll do seven and go ahead and vote on any of the cards. Don't vote on any of the categories. The way to vote is basically to click on a card to vote for it. Uh, you can hold down the shift key and remove a vote if you vote too many times on something or if you put the vote in the wrong place. No one will be seeing your votes as you put them down and no one will be seeing your arrows as well, your cursor arrows. So this is all gonna be anonymous uh, when you put your votes in. And since we have four other people that are kind of, uh, that are now participating, I'm gonna refrain from voting. I'm gonna join the sea turtle in the, in, and hold all my votes to myself and uh, let the duck, Alex, raccoon and the penguin all decide their votes on what they would like to move forward with and ideate against. And again, do not put votes on the categories. We won't be uh, speculating on those, just the cards underneath. If at any time you have any questions, do come off the microphone if you're a panelist and you can say those out loud really fast. Or if you want to, if it's easier, just use the uh, chat tool within Zoom and we'll be able to see those as well. So if you're the anonymous duck, uh, try voting on any, uh, this, so this may be a glitch in mural. Um, you'll have to let me know if, you're vote, if you are voting on your side, because I may not be able to see it. Um, and remember that's, that's somebody who just came in, but let me just double check. There you go, okay. Yeah, so anonymous duck, go ahead and vote. Once you get your votes in, I think we'll be set. But just go ahead and click on any of the cards to vote on them and they'll, you'll put your choices down that way. I don't have my phone, but... Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and end the voting then. Everyone looks like everyone that's voted, needed to vote, has voted. Uh, let's see where all of the votes kind of uh, vetted out. So we had one particular challenge that had gotten three unique voters. Um, there were a ton of two votes, but the one that came up first is how might we define the actual cost saved from improved processes at the end of projects? So without any kind of getting into the weeds about uh, the twos, I think the three is the one that will kind of go forward from there. Um, let's go ahead and give me 30 seconds while I put everything into the new spot. Do, 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 do. Just give me a second. Okay. So I'm gonna call the everybody's attention and mural over to the ideation part. So you should be seeing something on your screen that says ideate, sort, and vote as a team. What we'll be doing here is speculating directly on the how might we statement here. How might we define the actual costs saved from improved processes at the end of projects? You're gonna be taking these boxes here and you're gonna be rapidly ideating on the, the answer to this question. So I put a little question mark at the end so it, it makes sense. So that's essentially what this is. Uh, you don't necessarily have to dwell on a very involved answer to the question. You just have to put what's in your mind or what's in your head when someone asks this question and literally put those down in the gray squares. This one will have probably about three minutes to get done. If we don't have enough ideas coming through, then we may add some more time. But go ahead and if you want to put a card, all you have to do is just double click on the card to start writing on it and put in your answer and then double click on a different card to put in something uh, and continue your, your train of thought. So again, I'll add one more minute just to make sure that we have plenty of time to put in. So three minutes and 40 seconds, go ahead and start double clicking on any of the cards to put in your ideas uh, in terms of like answering the question, how might we define the actual costs saved from improving from improved processes at the end of projects? And I'm gonna 
go ahead and put in that so that reads a little better. Does anyone need more time to put in some ideas? If you do, you can put just a Y in the chat or you can come off microphone and say, yes, I need more time. Okay, I'll put in two more minutes.
You need to unmute yourself, Robert. So oh, this will be our last round of affinity diagramming. I know how much you've all enjoyed it, <laughs> or at least gone through the process, but we'll do it one more time. Uh, what, just for reference, one variation that seem, that works also is cluster diagramming, though I haven't used it as liberal as I have with uh, this affinity diagramming, since it seems to kind of get to arranging uh, the way that we can do for voting and sorting. But cluster diagramming is where you put things in piles and then slap a category on top of it. And that's usually much better for larger audiences, like really large audiences that are doing these LDJs of anywhere from 30 to 60 people. Um, if you're in that sort of, uh, that sort of um, situation, cluster diagramming is probably much easier for you to kind of do. So, okay, uh, one more time, I put all the, a copy of all the cards in um, right below this, the place where we had just done a, all of our ideation. Uh, I'll go ahead and zoom on it and zoom in so you can see the same thing I am. Um, so go ahead and take the cards and put them into categories that seem logical for you. Uh, if there are ones that are seem very, very similar that you can make an argument to remove one or the other, then go ahead and color those. But go ahead and put them in categories that make sense. Double click on the category if you want to rename it to something different. And once we do that, we'll uh, just check over the duplicates if there are any. And we'll get to one more round of voting before we get to measuring these ideas by impact and interest. For reference, for anyone on the that's viewing this or watching the recording that is a Mural user, this template that I'm using is available over on Mural's website. They have a large library of uh, different templates. They will also be uh, housing the Global Virtual Design Sprint templates once we're done with them in May. So they're an incredible resource to get a lot of great starter uh, whiteboards to do everything from uh, business canvas layouts to empathy maps to experience maps to Kanban boards. I mean, the, the library is getting pretty vast. This, this is, but this is definitely in there if you're, if you're searching for it later. And again, I'll remind everyone, there is no right or wrong answers. Just put them in the places where they think that makes sense and make sure that you give those stacks of cards some sort of category that defines everything that's underneath them in a way that makes sense. If there are any cards that don't seem to make sense, put them in uncategorized, then somebody else may find them and say that, that it could go this with this card. Um, and when we get close to finishing up, I'll go ahead and we'll look at all the cards for duplicates. Okay. Right, so we have one particular thing over here is defined OKRs. I'm gonna put that over and uncategorize since it doesn't seem to have a proper category. And I'll go ahead and sort those by to a column, so they're all nice and neat. Okay, uh, take a quick look and see if there's anything here that corresponds, that seems to have a duplicate. And if it doesn't, there's not a pro it's not a problem. Um, if you do find a duplicate, go ahead and color those cards so that we can take a look at them. Uh, 
it looks like over in people, and I'll sort this out really fast. Uh, add a controller to each project, a specific person on, on project to track and compare tasks using new process. So the second one implies that a controller does that sort of, um, those sorts of duties, though I will admit I'm the first to say that I don't know if that is the case, but um, let's just assume that the card may be talking about the same person or may not because then organization may have a different person than a controller doing that. But I think it's good to point out the fact that there are similar, we'll just keep them the same. Um, the purple ones under compare before and after have running lists, what this element cost last time, what it costs now, measure and visualize costs from beginning to end of the project and compare the improved process for one, one unit with an old one. Yep. I think all three are in the same boat. They are all granular in terms of speaking to something different, but that that's true. They all three of them should be kind of colorized because they're very very close. The blue, the blue cards say align teams on what costs are in the first place, financial only. Measure the savings in a different metric like the environment, less CO two, and so on. Um, yeah, it's speculating on if there's a, a measurement that the the company that you're talking about values more than another, but getting to brass tacks about what that is, is probably a, a good thing. But yeah, if they speak to the same kind of thinking around it. Um, reverse thinking, there's one that says highlight costs that would have been incurred if you had improved processes, define, it, define and track where automated tasks, define and track where automated tasks were, I think that's supposed to be were used over old manual tasks. Um, yeah. And I think that this arguably could also be in there as well. And that show what would have happened if the new process did not exist. Um, these two are probably more similar than this one, but all three are very, very close. Okay. I think we're good. Um, let's see, we have a little bit fewer. So we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 22. So let's say between five people. Let's do five. Five votes for everyone. Pick out your top five uh, ideas here that you would really want to explore in terms of a potential process like a design sprint or something else where you could um, see yourself uh, kind of speculating on this in a workshop at light environment. So I'll start a voting session. We'll make it five votes, correspond to ideas, and go ahead and vote for your top five out of everything here. Again, do not vote on the categories themselves. Um, you can vote on the, unca the uncharacterized cards if you want. It's totally up to you. But do not uh, vote on the categories or the uncharacterized cards card itself. Just kind of concentrate on the gray as well as the multicolored cards here. So I had a question from Tudor on how I calculate the votes. Um, I, I tend to be more uh, charitable with votes than I do like kind of being very uh, strict. But the formula I tend to do and that I've been falling back on is counting by fives and seeing how many cards there are. If there's a lot of cards, I tend to count by tens. But in this case, I'll go through it. It's five, then 10, then 15, then 20. There's 21. I know that we have four people that are actively uh, voting in the in these sessions. So basically, it's a matter of a doing division of uh, 20 divided by four, if you round it up, it's about five votes. So I, it was pretty square to kind of go about it that way. Um, I never go over 12 votes per person. Uh, I've seen people try to use 20, 25 votes, and it just gets redundant to the point where we're after like vote 13 or 14, people just kind of lather those those votes on like they're painting a wall and it's it never works out so you usually want to keep an upper limit of 12 votes on anything you're doing and while i was talking away it looks like everyone finished their votes so let's see where the votes ended up on the ideas see what we got okay so we have one that's that was a clear kind of uh like top part it says benchmark across the industry to compare similar projects and then we had four of them that were all vote two votes and two unique votes. So that's going to be our focus really quick before we go into the next session. We want to kind of 
put the top two out of those voted ones that are voted two. So we have three to kind of move forward with. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out all the twos here. I'm going to copy and bring them down in, in the space below where it says arrange by interest. Uh, let's move them into a row. Let's put them all the same color. Okay. So again, I'll, I'll bring everyone down where I'm, where I'm looking at. Okay, so the way to, this works, for those of you who didn't work around for the other ones, is that I'm going to place a card here right in the middle of this x-axis for interest. When you read this card, which is show options for each aspect of project and have the team vote on a solution. For you personally, does this hold a lot of interest for you in terms of an idea? That you would want to speculate on or less interest for you in terms of what you would want to speculate on um yeah let me go ahead and i'm going to lock that down so that doesn't move so you don't have any problems with it so that's basically how this will work so in the in what you want to do is move your mouse in the circle right just like this to show your interest with this particular card if it's high um, and then circle down here if it's a lower when you're thinking about the, the solution that we're talking about so show options for each pro aspect of project and team vote, have the team vote on solution. We've got three arrows over here on the right, and we got a raccoon that is exploring the, the, the whiteboard. So we're going to put this right here while the raccoon's doing that. Then we're going to go to um, standardize industry-wide uh, industry -wide how costs are measured. Now, in terms of your own personal interest, is it less interesting or more interesting for you than show options for each aspect of project and have team vote and solution. So we got two, keep on moving those mouses so I can see where they are. You got duck who's way on the right over the, there. And then we got two here, kind of sort of right here. I'd say it's right around there. Show options are a little bit uh, ahead of the game. Align teams on what costs are in the first place. Are they financial only? In comparison to these two cards and on the interest scale, where does this serve you? Um, we got the penguin saying it's right around in that flying space. We got two, they got a duck and Bach going over there. The raccoons just kind of lingering past over here. So it looks like it's kind of trailing these two. Let's put it right there. We're putting a nice little wall. Then finally, show what would have happened if the new process did not exist. So in relation to these three cards, where do you think this falls? Uh, Alex is way over here on the interest side, but all the other penguins, ducks, and raccoons, all the virtual animals are saying, you know what, this has some interest. So I think we've got one sit right there. So if we were to speculate on the th on the two that came out in front, it looks like sh these two uh, were definitely ahead of the others. So I'm going to bring this up here and give me two minutes to do some logistics and arranging everything. And hopefully the copy and paste from Mural will behave. Sometimes I think it's it tends to get a little wonky and it did okay let's duplicate this bring it up okay Okay. We'll bring everyone here. Okay, so let's review what we've done so far in our session. We've speculated that the top problem that we should be concerned about is that new ideas about process are extremely difficult to prove value. When we thought about that problem and speculated on where we should find a solution, the top voted how might we speculative statement was how might we define the actual cost saved from improved processes at the end of projects? So what is the outcome or the end result that would potentially show how we can prove value? And when we ideated on that question, we came up with these three particular ideas, benchmark across the industry, compare similar projects, 
show what would happen if the new process did not exist, and show options for each aspect of project and have the team vote on solution. Okay, so now that we have three ideas, Mark. Sorry, should, can I ask a question? Should the one with four votes not be taken over as well? Oh, I thought we already did that. That was the one that said benchmark across. This one? Yeah. Yeah, that was the one that's that's right here in blue. Oh, sorry, I missed that. That's okay. I move quick, so no worries. So what we're going to be doing first is over here on participant votes on the right hand side, where it says name, name and name in like th three different circles, I want you to pick a row and I want you to basically double click on that name and put your name in there. So I'm going to use the first row as an example, I'm going to put uh, Robert as my name and I'll do the same for the gold one, put in Robert here. And just for flair, I'll put Roberto as a gray one at the last one. Okay. Now the way this works for the impact interest mix, interest matrix, and I'm going to go ahead and lock this so that we don't have any problems with uh, kind of this thing moving on us, which tends to happen sometimes. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at first the blue one. So benchmark across the industry to compare similar projects. And I'm going to use my own dot as an example and put it right in the center here. And I'm going to go, okay, when I think about this idea in compared to the problem we're trying to solve and where we should go with it. How much of an impact first do I think that this idea would have where I benchmark across the industry to compare similar projects. So for me, I'd say, well, it's always good to see what other industries are doing and see if we can make a convincing argument for it, especially if we want to show that the cost saved. So I'm going to rate that fairly high. I think that's got to have a huge impact when we're actually working with metrics and data. So right around there for me. Now, I'm gonna look at it from the perspective of interest. So interest is the x-axis. For me personally, does this hold a lot of interest for me if I wanted to get involved with it? Benchmarking across the industry to compare some similar projects. And I like research, but I actually, it doesn't move the needle either way for me. So I'm gonna stay right in the middle with this. This is just me speculating on this one. It's like, yeah, I know how to do it, but it's not, it doesn't move the needle for me in terms of like, you know, wowing me, so to speak. I think there's other things that may have a higher interest. So I'm going to leave this here. So everyone that's currently a panelist will be doing the exact same thing I just did, but doing it for all three of these particular ideas and the corresponding those to each of those dots. So you don't have to wait and turn. You can go ahead and do them at any time you like. Go ahead and grab one dot, start in the middle or start anywhere you like and put it where you think it shows either impact or interest for you personally. Now, just in case, you're worried that a particular dot may offend someone if you put it in forget about it, which is low interest and low impact. Uh, historically speaking, people don't put any weight into that. This is just to gauge what would potentially have some, in, some um, motivation, intrinsic motivation for everyone that's involved in going in a particular direction. And then we'll take the remainder of the half hour to the last 10 minutes to have a conversation about the process and uh, why people put the dots where they did. So we'll just uh, hold out until everyone puts their dots where they think they should go. And then we'll have a conversation. And it looks like I'll put, take my dots out too. Now, for reference, if you wanted to anonymize this where you didn't see what people voted on, so this is very public, you're actually seeing what other people have kind of put their dots. You can actually put uh, circles to indicate where your interest is and then use the voting mechanism we just did uh, with problem, challenge, and ideas to make the vote private. And then people can put three votes in and then basically say which ones are which. So. If there's votes that correspond to the idea number one, there would be a blue circle where people could put their votes. And that would be in the I'm interested or the not that interesting stage. So I make it public just to show the example. Uh, I've tried doing it privately and it, there wasn't as much of a cognitive connection with that process. So if we look at things, it looks like in general, if you're talking about the things that are most in this square, the funny thing is, is that the gold one, the show what would have happened if the new process did not exist, feels like there's more interest and it has fairly okay impact. Um, it's, it's, it's sizable, it's there. And then when you take the blue one, the, it looks like there's definitely 
a measurement of impact. Like there's there, people can see that there's there's a lot of impact with this more so than the second idea, but the interest just isn't as much. It's a little bit of a downgrade, whereas Kim yeah, totally doesn't think it's going to have much impact at all, and then uh, or not as much impact as it could, I should say. And then the gray one, you got kind of a mix between people that are really gung ho about it, uh, and then you have others that are kind of have they think it's going to it's uh, going to have it's of huge interest but the impact is unsure. So um, I'll start off the conversation with a question first, because, and I'm gonna center it on Kim. Um, is Kim on the call? Is, is she on the panelist side? Or let me see. I just wanna verify this just, just to make sure. Now I got Kate. Hmm, I don't see Kim. Okay, we'll skip that. Um, actually, we'll go to Scott for a minute. Scott, you've got, looks like you have, uh, you went from, like blue seems to be the one that has kind of the correlating interest and impact in there, followed by a, one that seems to have more of an interest for you on the show what happens side. Do you want to kind of explain your point of view in terms of where you put these votes? Yeah, the, for example, the benchmarking across the industry would have big impact, but it's just so, that's such sort a of big, big challenge that's that's almost it's not something i could do um but it, it would it would have it would have i'd be interested to do it um but i think the and where i've gone with the show what would happen is obviously and i've done in comparison it, it would have impact on a project it wouldn't have as big impact on the industry as the other one would but it's something that i can identify with that's something i could I could actually get involved with. So that's gonna be why my interest is a bit a bit higher on that one. And the the other one is um, the yeah it, it, it's it's putting the design thinking type process into implementation. Um and it, and it would it would improve. I think it's it definitely has value, but it's uh that's quite small in comparison. So I think I think the sweet spot for me is that um, show it would happen if you to compare the processes. Yeah, and I'd argue that Kate's kind of in the same space a bit, especially with the way the votes panned out. Although she, Kate, you can speak up about this. It seems like your interest in the other two wasn't as strong as the one as the show what what might have happened. But you do think, like Scott did, that. Uh, you know, if you benchmark across the industry, that would, would have a greater impact, or at least it would have a marginally better impact than, than showing what would have happened. And I'll make sure you're off mic. Hang on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, try it now. Can you hear me okay? Now I can hear um, you, go for it. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with where, um, what you were saying kind of, um, synthesizing the data there um i don't just as a caveat i don't work in oil and gas but i work for the sector and the supply chain and i would i would I, certainly identify benchmark would be great but it's aspirational and it's huge and it's too big for for us type thing um and the gray one's just a little bit boring i think you know that would for me it's almost like that looks like an interface of some sort of digital aspect and i think the other one's much more exciting and something quite unique and challenging. So yeah, I would agree with what Scott, how he positioned it as well. Okay. And Alex, you had a really high interest when it came to uh, the show options for each aspect of the project and have team vote on the solution. But your 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 thought was probably, it sound, looks like it's that you thought the impact wouldn't be as much and it's kind of in line. Uh, it, it, it's different from your other two uh, participants in that. They had just, they didn't have as much interest, but what, what was your, what sparked your interest about this one? Well, it's like someone said before, like bringing a little bit of design thinking and design sprint and like a democrat, democratizing process to um, the industry. I'm not sure if, so that would be super interesting to, to, to do a system like that, to design a system like that and how that could look like. On the other side, um, 
I'm not really sure that this uh, these democratized structures really do make an impact in the first place. It, took, it takes um, quite a while. So um, I think would be super interesting, but would not have the impact that I would like. I see much more impact in really have a benchmark across the industry, um, how to compare projects. I see that this is a huge one, but um, I think this could be really really interesting because it really can 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 make things going and especially that is how i imagine people in the gas and oil industry are very number driven at least the ceos and the people so i think that one is really like uh, can have a huge impact and we should still should still try if we go for one okay so uh just some, a few minutes left uh how did you feel about the overall process? Alex, you've been through this before. So this is kind of a, a question that's aimed at both Scott and Kate. Uh, we've taken, taken about 90 minutes to kind of work through um, some top line issues with uh, oil and gas process and come to some potential uh, direction you could go in in terms of execution. I mean, what did you think about the experience of this? Scott, you go first? Or yeah, okay. yeah, you go first, Kate. Um, Robert, just to clarify about the mural experience or the actual structure, the, the processes of going through the different canvases? Um, you could do either, whichever one you, you think would be, uh, would be a better thing to talk about. Okay, because I think I was late coming in, I didn't see it from start to finish. I think what I did experience was really good. And um, because I'm, I do des design sprints all the time and person and I'm just getting to grips with Mural um, as a, a kind of online facilitation tool. I take my hat off to you, Robert. I thought you did amazingly well, really engaged the, the group and the voting. And so it's something that's kind of aspired me to, to keep trying to, to make this work. So it's a hard gig to, to keep the team with you and, and take them through the, the, the exercises. So yeah, it was really positive. I think it's great. Well done. Well, thanks. And sometimes when holding people's attention, this has enough gates in it so that they're, there's the notion that they should be involved. And you can always comment on which anonymous animal is slacking off. So you can see if they can get their attention that way. But you, there's tips and tricks you can use. So, But I appreciate the kind words. Um, Scott, what about your perspective? Yeah, I liked it. It was good to see the to go through the full process because I've done reading about the lightning decision jams and so it was good to see it from start to finish. I've, I've watched a few, I've been uh, observer and a few that you've ran before but I was multitasking at the time because I had other other things to do. So this was good to see it from start to finish. Makes sense. Um, and, and good to see how from a virtual point of view how it should be done. So that's a good, uh, it's a good, a good lear learning for me if I want to to use this mural tool uh, going forward. Now, if in terms of next steps, if you want to speculate on where this goes, um, since it seemed like the, the, the show, what would have happened is kind of the, it's kind of the, 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 the uh, middle between the one that seemed to have the most impact and the one that, that kind of was all kind of there, but not really um, as strong a case. This could potentially be something where you could frame it in a custom process, like a design sprint or something else to get a few people in the room to explore this, or maybe not even the room, do it virtually, and have something at the ready so that if you talk about improving process, you can speculate it in a way that the design sprint or the, the custom process that you have uh, can showcase why you need to think about it more in terms of custom process. So um, this, this, in terms of next steps, would probably manifest itself into an exercise that I like to do to customize design sprints. Alex, you were part of it. We're going to be doing something like that in March. Um, and for the global virtual design sprint, this is something where it would basically, the, whoever would own this and could take it forward in their organization can basically put it in a brief that for other people around the world to kind of get together and, and um, you know, that may be in oil and gas or may not be, but kind of explore this as like a potential, uh, like interesting challenge to go after. I will say one last thing too, is that this entire template was created by Sandy Lamb originally. This is just basically mm -hmm. ideated off of her original design. Um, if you don't know who Sandy Lamb is, she's a service designer out in, the, in uh, Germany, I believe. And uh, somebody who's very, very good at creating these sort of templates. Um, for everyone that's watching on YouTube and that's tuned in to 
uh, Zoom and is watching the recording and watching it live. Uh, I want to thank all the panelists that took part in this LDJ around oil and gas. I Hopefully it was a good use of your time and that we, the experience in and of itself could inspire you to do your own or potentially take some of the ideas that we had here and kind of move them forward in a way that makes sense to you. If any of you want to uh, ask any questions or get with me offline after this is done, uh, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. I mean, some of you have my direct email address um, and we can continue a conversation from there. Um, but otherwise, I'd like to thank everyone for their time and uh, hopefully this is really good for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, one, la one last thing before we break and I, I know this is customary and uh, I do this all the time, but let me stop sharing and uh, Hang on a minute. Let me stop this real fast. Let's, before we break, let's do the gallery view. We'll do the picture and then we're set. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there you go. You already prepared with it. Okay. Since I, I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, I'm going to do the, the, I forget the name of the artist, but I'm going to put the thing that I showed previously. So just grab anything from your, your desk, anything at all. It's like a trinket or something. That I knew it, Scott. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Here, I'll do both. Do like a. Uh, yeah, really show off. <laughs> oh, the Grinch. I like it. There you go. Okay, ready? Ah, okay, hold on to it. Ready? One. Like I'm, I'm like on eBay trying to sell things. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your week. And we'll talk to you all later, okay? Yeah. Cheers, Robert. Cheers. Bye-bye. See you later.